Hi, my name is Dr. Nero Kesh, and today we're going to be talking to you about the Acuro Spinal Navigation System. We're going to walk you through on how to use this to do a thoracic epidural. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have our patient placed in the appropriate position. Now, for our epidurals that we do preoperatively, for anesthesia, we're going to have them in a seated position with their head flexed forward. And this allows us to open up the epidural space in the thoracic spine. The next thing you're going to want to do is locate the, uh, the area that you want to go through. The way we do this is we can find the scapular spine, and then this will demarcate the T3 space, or the T3 spinous process. You're going to go down from there, you're going to find the inferior angle of the scapula, which is down here, and then just midline to that is going to be your T7 vertebral body, and this will allow us to find the T7, T8 uh, interlaminar space, which is where we're going to do our procedure for today. The next thing you want to do is you're going to want to prep the Acuro Spinal Navigation System. And we need to do this sterilely. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your device, you're going to place the screen facing down, and you're going to have this back end pointing up. You're going to put your non-sterile gel on top of this, and then you're going to put on your sterile gloves. Inside your kit, you're going to have a few different things. The first thing you're going to want to take, this. This is our cover. Most important thing is you want to have this facing down. Place this over the probe. You're going to hold on to this tab, then you're going to grab the top end, which is going to be your covered portion, and you're going to grab just the tab portion, and you're going to pull it around. And this is going to form a film over this. You're then just going to pull the tab, and it's going to rip just the top portion. You don't need this anymore. You're going to see this white portion right here. This is our sticker. We're going to take this off, and then you're going to take this portion, and you're going to fold it back over itself. And this will allow it to stick onto the back. And now you have your sterile probe cover. After that, you're gonna put your gel on this. So you're gonna take your sterile gel, open this up, place it on this, and you're gonna place your locator needle guide, which is also in the pack. The long end is gonna be facing upwards. You're gonna push down firmly, and you're gonna feel it click into place. After that, you're set up to start scanning. Now, the most important thing is how you hold this. You wanna make sure you're stabilizing it so it doesn't move as you're doing that. An easy way to do this is have your thumb facing up and your fingers facing down. This way, this is gonna be balanced on the back of the spine, so you can easily move this up and down with slow and controlled micro movements. Now to better understand this, let's take a look at our true view spine right here. This gives us a great look as to how what we're going to see when we're looking at it under this under this device. First, you're going to take your probe and you go over this area. This is going to be the hyperechoic line that you see first. This is the spinous process. As you translate upwards, you're going to start to see the transverse processes over here and over here. Once you translate further upwards, those are going to disappear and then you're going to start to see your lamina. Now, you're not gonna stop here. You're gonna keep scanning upwards until you see the spinous process, which again is the hyperechoic line that is very superficial, to know what your window is and where you're gonna place your needle. You're then gonna translate down caudally again to see your lamina, and you're gonna see that this is the area in which you wanna place your needle. Take a look under here. We're gonna set up our probe again. You're gonna start at the spinous process, which is gonna be your hyperechoic line at the top right there. As you translate upwards, you're going to see the transverse processes on the side, laterally. As you keep going upwards, you're going to see those disappear and you're going to start to form the lamina, which are going to be this hyperechoic line medially. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to keep going upwards until we find the next spinous process. So right here is our next spinous process. This gives us our window in which we want to place the needle. We go back down caudally. And this is our lamina again. So this is gonna be where we wanna place our needle. Now to go through this further, I'm gonna hand it off to Dr. Amit Galati. Today I will be showing you how to place a thoracic epidural using the Acuro ultrasound guidance system. Once you have the spinous processes in midline with the Acuro system, you will notice that once your Acuro device has identified both the spinous process and the thoracic lamina, it will give you a guidance using a green image for the needle tract indicator. And then it will give you a depth that is orange and telling you the depth of the lamina from the skin. At that point, 
you will insert the thoracic epidural after local anesthetic and, and it's for skin anesthesia and to the guide. The guide will direct the needle to the lamina at which time you can take off the Acuro. Once the needle is in the right place, you can use landmark based techniques to walk your needle off the lamina until you feel that the needle has passed through the lamina, at which point you can remove the guide wire and use the loss of resistance to air technique. Once the loss of resistance occurs, you'll place the catheter, in this particular case a guide wire, into the epidural space. Many physicians are intimately familiar with the bony landmarks seen on fluoroscopy. Centrally here, you have the spinous processes, and more laterally here, you have the lamina, and then the interlaminar space seen here. Using the Acuro epidural guidance system, you can use the system to then find and locate the lamina, and then using the needle guidance system, you will land the needle onto the lamina, then using your typical walk-off technique, you'll walk the needle into the interlaminar space. Using loss resistance technique, you'll gain access to the epidural space and then be able to thread your catheter cephalad. And here you can see successful placement of the catheter inside the epidural space.